Q Cool, what's going on? Y'all already know I'm your host, Suave Q. You guys are tuned in to a dose of Q-Pill. And I wanted to share a story with you guys. I don't tell stories often, but I have stories for days. And right now, I want to share this one because I seen a tweet that said, Fellas, name a terrible judgment call that you made because you wanted some sex. And I immediately thought of the most traumatic experience to date that I've experienced and mind you, I've done some pretty outlandish shit for sex. I've gone to great distances. You know, I've been involved in, in some things and, and, and found myself in some situations for some sex because the opportunity to present itself. And it, that's so interesting as humans. Isn't it interesting how sex is not something that we actually need in order to survive outside of reproducing the next generation for survival? Meaning we have to eat, sleep, and drink in order to survive. But sex is regulated by the same part of the brain that, you know, regulates thirst, hunger, and the need to sleep as if it's just as vital to survival. But we can go without it, yet we behave like we can't and it makes us make irrational decisions when we're horny. And this is one of those instances, and I promise y'all, everything that I'm about to say to y'all is 100% true, accurate. This is no exaggeration. There is no embellishing. It still gives me anxiety to sit here and speak about this to this day. I got bogged down in South Carolina in the woods in the middle of nowhere on a back road because I wanted to have sex. I'll say that again. I got bogged down in South Carolina in the woods in the middle of nowhere and the sign said no trespassing to the dirt road that I was on that I took the girl that I was dating to so that we could have sex in my car. About 48 months ago, home for the holidays, enjoying the fam, house full of people. I'm chilling, sitting on the couch. I get a text. The girl I'm dating sitting next to me, she texts me, I want some. Now, of course, a house full of people, there is nowhere for us to have sex. So being a resourceful, creative guy that I am, tell everybody I'm going to the store. Ask if they need anything. Let's make it look real. Ask them if they need anything. They say, nah, of course, one person want a bag of chips. I say, I got you. I, I can do that. But we slide out and looking for a spot to have sex. Mind you, this is the country. This is back roads. It's a lot of back dirt roads. It's a lot of cattle. There's black bears. It's, it's just a land of nothingness. It's really, you rarely have service where we're at. Find a nice secluded area, see a dirt road, miss the no trespassing sign. I said, this look like a nice spot. Pull down the dirt road, had to pull far enough down the dirt road to where the highway, the main road, the main highway that we were coming off of, people couldn't ride past and see the back of my car parked. So we went around the bend and my subconscious was telling me, my instincts was telling me, don't go down this road because I seen the mud puddles and I'm thinking, I literally thought to myself, what if we get stuck? But then I laughed it off and was like, fuck it, we ain't gonna get stuck. So my dumb ass continues down the road. We go about 150 yards down this dirt road. We ride through this huge mud puddle forward. We ride through it, park the car, we get it on. Beautiful session, great. I put it on her, gave her the good, good, punished her. We lay there and talk for a minute, then it's time to leave. So I go to back out and I'm thinking to myself, that puddle was pretty big. That mud, that mud puddle was pretty big. Now I might have to floor it to get through that so that we don't get stuck because we run a real possibility of getting bogged down. And I knew it. So I was already nervous to try to get out to begin with because it just seemed like this was one of those situations and the way the terrain was, it looked like we could get bogged down. So I go to Florida as we backing up because the dirt road is only the width of my car. It's only the width of my car and I can't actually turn around, not even a three point turn. It would be extremely difficult. You know, the woods is like right on the side of us, which is scary as hell when you think about it, because we don't know a Bigfoot out here watching us, the Chupacabra. I, I have no idea. Anything could be out here watching us. Um, And at this point, it's like 3.30 in the afternoon. So the sun is still fairly high but you know the sun sets especially in the winter the sun sets early so we have to be mindful of that so as i'm backing out backing out i go to floor it go to try to get through the mud puddle and it's deeper than i thought so because it's deeper than i thought i actually have to slow down because 
it would be like a pothole. I don't want to mess up my car. So the minute that I slow down and I go to give it gas, the wheel starts. I said, oh, hell no. Shit. I try a couple more times. Bogging myself down further and further. She looking at me like, and I'm looking at her like, Like, I know we ain't about to get stuck. So at this point, that anxiety started to set in because I just told myself we might get stuck and my dumb ass didn't listen. So she like, we stuck? And I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, we not stuck. I go to give it some more gas, floor it. Further bogging myself down. So I immediately get out to survey the land, check it out, see what's going on. The water covers half my wheel so the water is about nine inches deep so I'm about nine inches deep in some mud and water got brand new uggs on my uggs in the water i'm like yo she like we stuck and i'm like yeah we stuck but i'm gonna get us out i'm gonna get us out i'm gonna get us out so instantly i'm thinking i'm thinking i'm, I'm thinking fucking pb and j out of noodle do the noodle dance. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of a way to get us out. So I see a house about 30 feet away. It's an old abandoned like little shed. I go to it, rip the roof off to see if I can put it under the wheel to get some traction. Maybe that can get us some traction. I can ride on that and it'll pull us right out. That didn't work. So the next thing I do is at this point, the anxiety and the stress has set in. So the hysterical strength has set in. So I'm turning into the hawk because I'm like, we got to get out because under no circumstances can we call my family and ask them for help and tell them that we were having sex in the woods on a dirt road. And that's how we got bogged down. What family member would want to go help their their family out and 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 go drag them out of the mud because they wanted to be grown and go have sex in the woods? Of course, we're grown and I don't really think. It would be that big of a deal, but it was a matter of embarrassment and just the fact that we said we were going to the store and, you know, I just said, listen, we can't call them and tell them we got to get out of this shit on our own. So at this point, I go to try to lift up the back of my 3,800 pound Dodge Charger and I tell her, give it some gas. Let me see if I can lift it up and we can get some traction from me actually lifting it up. So she lifts it up. I, I, she she gives a gas. I lift it up as much as I can. I actually lifted it up. She says she could feel me lift it up. I actually lifted it up. It lifted it up about that much off the ground, and because I'm 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 losing my shit right now. I'm I'm losing my shit. So I probably really did turn into the Hulk to some degree. Didn't work. Nothing. So then she's like, maybe you should try nine one one. I'm like, okay, call nine one one. 911 cannot fucking geotag the location where we are because where we are where we are is in the middle of nowhere. We're literally in the middle of nowhere. I'm talking about there was more around Courage the Cowardly Dog's house than where we were. They couldn't geotag the location. So 911 out. Can't send the police cuz we're out of jurisdiction. They can't dispatch the police to us because the police to us because the police wouldn't know where we are and the police don't come out to where we are. Unless it's like, unless it's like a, a a super emergency, being bogged down, that's not considered an emergency, in 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 their eyes. So the next thing I do is call the tow truck. So I try to call the tow trucks, two tow truck companies within the area. One says they have no idea where we are and they can't send anybody because they don't come out that far. And the next one says, um, we only have two tow trucks and both of them are out and we have no idea when they'll be back. So guess what? We just ran out of our contingency plans. We have no alternative plan at this point. So now we're stuck. And at this point, it's been about two and a half hours to three hours. So I'm literally just, we sitting in the car and I'm just thinking, I'm like, yo, we really stuck in the fucking woods right now. We really stuck in the woods. And at this point, it's starting to get dark because it gets dark early in the winter. So I'm looking at the woods, making sure ain't nothing watching us, you know, Making sure ain't nothing hunting us. Because at this point, you know, anything could happen. We y'all seen the movie Wrong Turn. It could be cannibals out there. You know what I mean? 
movie Wrong Turn where they up in the mountains of West Virginia, West Virginia and when people go through a certain territory, the cannibals pick them off and then eat them. At this point, we could be, we sitting ducks. I'm scared. I'm scared as hell. And But I can't show fear in front of her. I'm like, yo, I got to think. We got to get out of this. I'm like, let me think, baby. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. We got to get out of this. So as I turn around to go to the road for a phone signal, because I'm trying to think of somebody else to call. I'm looking for a phone signal. Um, as I'm walking back to my car, about 200 feet ahead of my car, I see a silhouette coming out of the darkness. I thought I was hallucinating. And I'm looking, I'm like, is that a person? And I yell out, excuse me. And the silhouette responds, what you doing out here? The sign said no trespassing. Nobody's supposed to be out here. Y'all didn't see that sign? It's a white man with a shotgun over his shoulder. And I'm like, shit, we about to get shot. We trespassed on this white man's territory. He about to shoot us. And I was like, we're, we're stranded. Can you, can you, can you help us? What y'all doing out here? How y'all end up stranded out here? Oh, shit. Asking too many questions. And, you know, I just cut to the chase. I'm like, you know, we, we, we was being, we was being adults. You know what I mean? Can you help us or not? Well, I don't know if I got anything that can help drag that out. I have to go check the truck. So he runs to his truck. Thankfully, he has some rope. He has something that can tow us out. The luck. Sitting there three and a half hours. And as I'm going back to my car, all hope is lost. I see this guy in the distance silhouette walking towards our car. And he has something to help us get out of this fucking mud. I felt a great deal of relief. A great sigh because we were cold. We were hungry. Time had passed. We reached out to our family to let them know we was okay. Told them we got stop. We got something to eat. We chilling at the park. We, you know what I'm saying? I'm showing her around the town. Trying to make it look like, you know, we good. We straight so that they don't worry. He helped us out. I made a three-point turn close to the woods. Went to floor it to get through that puddle. Got through that puddle, but got to a second puddle. Second puddle and got balled down again. But luckily, he was right behind us. And he pulled us out of that one, too. And... I floored it. I got out. I wanted no parts of that dirt road anymore. I got the fuck off that dirt road. Back to the main road. Never been so happy to see a main road. We went. I was so happy to get away. Offered to give him, offered to cash app him $100, but he didn't have cash app, so the job was free. And actually, he knew my grandfather because my grandfather is like the best police officer the town has ever seen. So he knew who my grandfather was. I'm just hoping that he didn't tell him. It's nighttime. My car is muddy. I'm muddy. Had to wash the car off. Had to eliminate the evidence. So the nearest car wash was 45 minutes away. So we drove 45 minutes to the nearest car wash. Got the car wash. Got back to the house. Act like everything was regular. Act like nothing happened. Yeah, we had a good time. We had a great time, guys. We we you know we we went to the park. I chased her. I actually slipped and fell in the mud. That's why I'm muddy. You know. But man, when I tell y'all. the worst judgment call I've ever made to get sex. Having sex in my car in the woods and getting bogged down and stuck for three and a half hours with no help. Scariest shit I've ever experienced so far in my life. 100% true story. Two years ago. I can look back on it and laugh now, but it still gives me anxiety thinking about it. I'm traumatized from that shit. I have PTSD. I just wanted to share that with you guys because I don't think things like that happen to people very often. And I hope y'all never have to experience anything like that. But I hope this story was pretty entertaining for y'all. Just wanted to share a quick story with y'all. I have stories for days. If y'all want me to tell some more stories from time to time, let me know. Drop your comments, like this video, share this content with your family, your friends, your colleagues, your peers. Let them get a dose of the Q-Pill as well, because as I said, I have a lot of stories that I could tell, and I will share them if y'all want to hear them. But it's crazy what sex can make us do, and it's crazy what we go through just to get sex. 3.5 hours in the woods stranded with no help for a 20-minute sex session.
And if you ask me, was it worth it? Fuck yeah, it was worth it. But I'm still scared to death. I never want to experience anything like that in my life ever again. So that's that's the most terrible judgment call I've ever made trying to have sex. Just thought I'd share that with y'all. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Y'all be blessed. Y'all be safe. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all night. Suave Q, over and out.